What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here and let's continue on from the theory video and let's go ahead and implement our sequences for our units. So the first thing that we're actually going to do is let's create a new object actually and we are going to call this O player. All right, and we'll just leave it at that for now. The next thing that we're going to do is we actually need to have a sprite, an animated sprite that we're going to use. If you guys don't have one, I will provide a link for this particular itch.io page in the description and in the comments section below. So check those out if you don't already have your own animated sprites. If you do, that's great. That's good. Um, but uh, we're going to be working with this knight looking animation character here because has the most but uh we'll uh, we'll get on that in just a moment let's minimize that out and let's import the idle just the idle animation for now let's import that into our game so if you are using your own that's great if you don't have your own you want to get your asset pack the link is in the comments and in the description below so check those out okay so i've Using the magic of editing, I've imported my sprites and my particular animation has 15 frames and is playing at 30 frames per second. So it's a decent pace. We can lower that if you want. You can do that if you want. That's that's totally up to you. But uh, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I have a feeling that the animations may look a bit fast in our scene, but that's totally fine with me. I'm, I'm okay with that. So what we're going to do to actually get this working is let's, uh, well, you know what? Let's work with the sequences first. We're going to go ahead and create a new sequence. I'm going to call mine uh, S player. That's it. And to actually start working with sequences, Actually, you know what? Let's let's get a bit of a refresher for our sequences, especially for the people who have never worked with them. This here is our canvas. And so whatever we drag onto here, that's what's going to appear in our sequence editor. What we want to do though is we want to have our character at zero, zero on the sequence panel itself. The reason being because we want to actually be at well, we want it to be at zero. So I think that's zero there. I think I, I think I messed myself up. But um, anyway, yeah, I've messed myself up. So let me just fix that. Zero, zero. There we go. He's zeroed out. So that's good. And why do we need our character to be at zero is because if we place this sprite anywhere else it's going to kind of everything's going to look off um so just place it at zero if you want to you can delete that track actually not duplicate you can delete this and if you want it to be at zero every single time all you have to do is instead of dragging it onto the canvas you can take your sprite and you can just drag it into the track panel itself and it will always be at zero. So just to let you guys know. Now a couple of other things here. We have our broadcast message, we have our moments, and we have our curve editor for the animations. We are not going to work with a curve editor at all in this series, but we will be later on working with the broadcast as well as the moments. So keep that in mind. And now, there are three elements to our animation panel here. We have the uh, we have the start, which is this red flag here. We have our end, which is this one over here, and this here is our playhead, and it determines if I zoom into our character. It determines which particular frame is being played on screen for us. All right, so this is going to be important for our code. And the length of the animation itself will also be important. So this particular animation is 39 frames. Yeah, uh, not 39, 29 frames. So keep those numbers in mind because we will need them. 
Anyway, that's it for our sequence. That's all we're going to do for now. Let's go into our room and we are going to add a new asset layer. This asset layer is where we will be creating our sequences. The sequences can't go onto any other layers, only the asset layer itself. So I've just created mine and I'm going to rename it to, well, sequences. Just like that. And we can close that off. And we are done for now with the room and the sequences. Let's jump into the code. And instead of here in the manager game object, instead of unit, instead of spawning a unit, we are going to spawn a player. And that is done. <laughs> That's all we're going to be looking at for the manager game object. And here in the player, what we're going to do is we are going to set a parent. By clicking on here, we can set a parent from no object to the unit. And so naturally it's going to inherit all of this information that we have here, which is perfect. Now we are going to get a bug if we don't change anything. So if we open up the unit parent, we are going to comment out this draw self line. The reason why we do that is because our, um, our player actually inherits from it, right? And so if it's going to try, it's going to try and run this code, but because we don't have a sprite associated with our actual character or our object, it's going to throw an error. So let's try playing our game. And you can see that nothing changes except for the fact that we now no longer have characters. And that's, that's totally fine. We are going to close that off. That's fine. Everything's fine. All right, good. So, um, you know what? Let's fill in the skeleton for our player. We're going to be jumping between the player and the, the player object and the unit parent object quite a bit in this video. So let's go ahead and inherit the parent event. We can get rid of these two lines up top. We can get rid of this line as well, actually. And make sure that your event inherited is at the very top of your player's create event because it needs to inherit all of this data that's from the uh, parent unit before it makes any changes. So let's save that out. And then, you know what? Let's stay in the um, player object. I think it'll be easier if we just write out all of the code here first and then fill it out in the unit as we go forward. Yeah, I think that's probably the best option. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is actually create the sequence that will be associated with the player. So let's do that now by putting it into a variable. I'm going to call mine unit sequence. And this player sequence uses the function layer sequence create, this one here, layer sequence create. It needs four, it needs four parameters, a layer ID, which is what we created before. Um, it needs an X and a Y position, very easy, as well as the sequence that it's actually going to create. So for us, what we're going to do is naturally, we're going to be using the sequences layer. The X and Y position will be the X and Y of our player object. So here we can just go X and Y, and then the actual sequence that we are going to create will be the player idle. Really simple. Um, but not, sorry, not the sprite itself, the actual sequence. So S player, not player idle. Sorry, there we go. All right, that's done. Let's see what happens if we click play. We're gonna see, we saw that it played the animation once and then disappeared. That's because we need to actually tell Game Maker that there is a start and end point of these animations and that we need to loop the idle animation in particular. So to do that, 
we are going to remember that our animation in our sequence starts at 0 and ends at 29. So here in the next line, under unit sequence, we are going to store some variables here. We have idle start, which is the start of our idle, idle animation. And that's going to be 0. Then we have idle end which is going to be the end of the idle animation at 29. And now the reason why we're putting this code here um, in our actual player is because you might have units that have longer or shorter idle animations or longer or shorter animations in general. And so if we were to put these in the parent event, you could, but that would mean that each and every single one of your characters would have to have the exact same length in terms of its animations, right? So that's something to keep in mind. You can have one or the other, that's totally fine. It just, what matters is that uh, you make sure, where is it, that they have to align with each other. And so to avoid that, to be able to have different length of animations, we are going to put the animation control code, as in the start and end frame information, into each and every single object. But the actual animation state machine code will be in the parent itself. Having said that, let's get into it. So in the unit here, we're going to add a new event, which is going to be our step event. Before we put any code in though, we need to go back to the create. Yeah, we're gonna be all over the place today. And we are going to add in some new macros. These are the macros that we are going to use to essentially build our state machine. Seeing as we only have idle for now, let's add a macro for that in. We are going to then store this information into a variable naturally. All right, and that's done. So in our step event, we are going to run a switch statement. And of course, we are going to be reading the state event. It's uh, the state variable. And then here, we're going to write cases, of course, case uh, idle. Here in the case, because if you remember when we played the animation, it would run the animation once and then it just disappears. We need to put in some code that will tell it to loop through here. Now we could simply click this, uh, change the playback mode, but then what will happen to all the other animations? Because if you remember from the theory video that we went through before, we are going to have multiple animations in a single sequence. And so that's why we define the start and end of these animations. So here in the idle state, we are going to we are going to check if if I can remember this correctly, a uh, sequence uh, get head position. Yes, that's correct. So what we're going to do is we are going to read the position of our yellow bar. This is the head position, and so what's going to happen is. If the head position, and we need a sequence element ID, which for us is the unit sequence, unit sequence. So if the head position of the unit sequence is greater than idle end, then what we need to do is we need to take this head position and we need to set it back to the start. It doesn't mean that we set it back to zero because like I said, we might have other animations that we want to loop. For example, the defend animation, right? That the defend idle animation, we might want that to loop. Or maybe you want your character be to be doing a weird dance or something. You want them to loop that. Well, that's when we need to do this, right? So we don't set it to zero because not all animations will be from zero. So what we're going to do is we are going to use a similar function, which is layer sequence 
not question mark, head pause. And what this does is this reads, right? Because it says get, but this will set it. It will set the position to, and it needs a sequence element ID, which is unit sequence. It will set the unit sequence head position to idle start. Really simple. I know I took my time explaining everything, but here we go. If we play our game, we can see that it loops through the animation. Now, there's a pause here. You can see a well, that looks like a half second pause, maybe. And it's because of the actual animation itself. So if we play this, we can see that it's the exact same animation. I mean, it's zoomed in a bit, but um, that's that's totally separate to what we're working with. And so everything works. It works just fine. And so I think I can leave it here and I will ask you guys between now and the next video to add in an attack animation and add it to your sequence. So yeah, I think that's good homework for you guys. <laughs> good homework over the New Year's. I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be too hard, but uh, add in your attack animation and also don't forget to add in the information for that for your attack start and attack end. Anyway, that's all from me. Hopefully you get that done and in the new year we will continue on with the next video here. I think it might be a couple of videos instead of just one, so keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.